you very much for allowing me to speak this evening at uh, this uh, great conference. Uh, and uh, I'd love to share with you some of our, about our project, uh, which is about OSMAP, which is the Australian Microplastic Assessment Project. Um, I'd just like to thank, um, as I said, the um, organisers for allowing me to come and, and likewise the traditional custodians um, of the lands which we are. I'm in Adelaide, so it's the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. Our project is based through the Total Environment Centre, which is an organisation, non-for-profit organisation in Sydney, but I'm actually based in Adelaide just to throw a little spanner in the works. Um, it's the national program that we run here. So today I'm just going to talk to you about our program. So litter is obviously everywhere. We see it in our parklands, we see it in our waterways, we see it everywhere. And it's obviously a huge problem in which we're facing. Uh, so today I'd just like to talk to you about our innovative and program, our global first program, in fact, um, OSMAP, um, which is a national citizen science project for mapping microplastic around Australia. So the litter that we see, it comes from us. 80% um, of it uh, comes down our waterways, comes down our stormwater drains and lands into our oceans and other water bodies. This is a, a photograph taken in the Cooks River, uh, right here, well, in Sydney, and you can see an awful lot of debris. So 80%, as I said, comes from land-based sources. Once out there in the ocean, it often sinks and then suffocates anything else that's out there. So once out there, we know though that plastic does not break down. It only breaks up into smaller and smaller pieces, uh, creating what we call uh, is microplastics. And so microplastics are plastic pieces of debris that's less than 20 mils in size, millimetres in size. So about the size of half of your little pinky. Uh, right down and it breaks up over time, over time, over time and creates even airborne plastics that, we, that we're actually breathing in. And I'll chat about that in a little while. For our program, OSMAP, we look at the one to five millimetre range because as a citizen science project, it's the stuff that we can see as citizens. So that's what we were using, that's that size class to be able to capture uh, that information on this. So where does this microplastic come from? Well, it comes from a variety of, of areas. Obviously, there's the breakup of larger products. So a lot of probably about 45% or almost half of everything that's found out there in our environment uh, is made up from the beverage industry. Less so now with the cont container deposit scheme over here in Adelaide in particular, uh, still waiting for that in New South Wales, but it's the breakup of larger pl plastic items in our environment. Uh, there's also microfibers from the clothing that we wear, the synthetic clothing. Every time we wash our products, particularly active wear, um, those clothing fibers come off. And unfortunately, still now, uh, there's no filters in our washing machines that can capture that. And um, from wastewater, it goes straight out there into the environment. There's also over this side here on the right hand side of the screen is microbeads. So uh, in some of the products that we have that um, we cleanse our face with, we clean our teeth with, anything with a granule in it is actually made of plastic. Uh, and so obviously when we spit that out or we wash our phases, it washes straight down our uh, water system and straight out into the ocean. And of course then there's nurdles. So nurdles or resin pellets is the basis of, of all plastics. And so when plastics is made, it gets made into these round circular balls and then that gets molded into different products. And all of those create what we call microplastic. The impacts of these though are global, both on our, in, 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 in our entirety in the ecosystem. This is an albatross chick. Uh, so she or it hadn't fledged the nest at this point. And on the right there shows all the pieces of plastic that were actually found in that one bird's stomach, about 360 odd pieces. And you can see larger items such as whole toothbrushes or cigarette lighters that were actually found in there as well. So obviously uh, this bird died not only from probably a perforated stomach, uh, but also from um, the toxins that are attached to all of these plastics. And of course, the belly fills up uh, with plastic 
and therefore the, the animal is not able to feed properly. If you can see down in the bottom part of the bird, um, you can see these little black marks down here, they're actually squid beaks, which is what this bird should have been fed and which it was being fed by its mum and dad, but obviously um, the belly was so full of plastic, unfortunately, um, that it couldn't feed on anything else. And unfortunately, as a result of all of this out there, there's that direct assimilation into the food, food web um, that then can potentially affect us as well. Um, and that's what our program's working towards. Uh, the human impacts, this looks like a very busy slide, but in fact, it's just highlighting the different projects that have started to look at the impact of plastics on the human health in our bodies. It can um, affect our respiratory system, our nervous system, a kidney system, et cetera, et cetera. So quite considerable, but in fact, you can't feed plastic to people. So we don't actually know that physical long-term uh, consequence of that as well. A recent study by our colleagues, I work very closely with Macquarie University in Sydney uh, and um, other colleagues from University of Newcastle have shown that through looking at people's diets and what they consume, that we as a general population consume around about one gram, uh, five, sorry, five to eight grams of microplastic every single week, which is equivalent to a credit card size which is kind of crazy. Now that can come in from uh, the water that we drink. If you drink a bottled water, not only is the bottle got microplastic attached to it that seeps into the water, but they even find it in the water, in beer, for goodness sake, uh, and many, many other places where they're finding plastics now. So this then led on to, there's all this plastic out there. Well, how can we, how can we look at the impact of this? And what better way than to engage citizens? And so, uh, OSMAP itself was um, initiated in mid to um, 2018 uh, out of, as, as I said, the Total Environment Centre in Sydney. It's a nationwide citizen science project for mapping where this microplastic is around Australia. Uh, and really importantly, to educate, empower and engage our local citizens in, in exactly that. Because as scientists, we know we can't be everywhere. So by, by creating this innovative um, program by creating a, a rigorous scientific methodology, we're able to use that to map microplastic around Australia. So that's exactly what we do. So we identify using our OSMAP methodology where those hotspots potentially are. We identify then where there's no hotspots because that's just as important. Once we identify those spots, we look at the sizes of the microplastic, we look at the shapes, the colors, the types, very importantly, because then once we've identified that, we can then hopefully find out where they're actually coming from. Once we can find out where it's coming from, we can find effective remediation strategies to stop it before it enters our waterways. And in amongst all that, it's about behavioural change. By us doing this program with uh, lots of people around Australia, we're able to just change those people's perceptions on how they can make their own individual plastic footprint minimised. We also involved a lot of research and development in, aside from this, which is hopefully, and it is starting now, two years on to lead towards some management and some policy decision-making, which is really important. So overall around Australia since mid 2018, sorry, we've, we've undertaken 33 training events. So what we do is run these training events in different places around Australia, where we train citizens to be OSMAP leaders. We train them and we accredit them um, and they can be anything from teachers, environmental educators, school students, council staff, waste managers, um, and our best people that are involved are retirees. We then create these regional hubs around Australia and you can find out more information on that on our website. We've collected over 300 samples from around Australia. We've collaborated with over 350 different groups now, which is really exciting, trained over 560 people equating to around 35,000 volunteer hours of citizens, um, but most importantly, removed over 100,000 microplastics from our shorelines, which is really exciting. The more we can remove, the less impact they have, not only on us, but obviously on the animals that live there as well. So the program is basically cut into different stages. And, and the initial part of our program was about the development of the microplastics 
didactic sampling. And so uh, these are some figures here where we engage students and um, community members from around Australia using our methodology uh, and we collect that data, which we then map. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved, we've created these regional hubs um, and you can get in touch with them and be part of this program, anybody out there around Australia. So what we then find, this is an example around Sydney region, is that we've categorised depending on the microplastic per metre square as our microplastic load from very low zero to 10 right up to very high, which is a thousand and plus. So you can see a few black marks there around Sydney. Unfortunately though, being here in Adelaide, our actually highest loads that we found anywhere in Australia to date have been right here on West Lakes. Uh, if those that know um, Adelaide region, and I know Jasmine, who's gonna speak soon, is from Adelaide as well. Over nine and a half thousand pieces per square metre we found in that area. So we're now working towards where is it coming from and how do we stop it? So over in DY, in, uh, for those that are in uh, Sydney would know this area, I've just moved over from there. We've got a program going around DY Lagoon where we're using our whole um, model to be able to engage a whole bunch of different sectors from um, Macquarie University, so students, um, non-for-profits like Surfrider, Coastal Environment Centre and Northern Beaches Council and local high schools and residents. And we've identified that the DY Lagoon is a hotspot. Very much so, it's also a, a very key ecological protected area for wildlife. The next stage is then to, to try and track where this stuff's coming from in which we're finding there. And that bottom right picture in the Petri dish, those little black marks, they're actually what we call rubber crumb. So this rubber crumb is like from soft fall um, um, uh, play equipment areas. And there's also, you can see some grass like things, that's art artificial grass from playing fields. So we can start to track back and find out where these things are coming from. Once we know where they're coming from, we can find those effective solutions to stop it. And all in amongst that, we can then target our education and awareness programs to those different sectors. So for example, um, being able to track where those sources are coming from, this is a figure here of DY Lagoon. So DY Lagoon, it flows out into the ocean and back up through here is the creek system. And you can see it over here. And so what we can do is put some stormwater nets up along these different stormwater outlets and we can try and identify which stormwater drain is leading to what kind of debris. So for example, in the industrial area up here, we have high loads of foam and also film, oh, sorry, foam and pellets up here, mainly in the industrial area. Whereas in the high density area, which is down in here, a lot of film, a lot of plastic coverings. Uh, in the low density, normal kind of uh, dwellings, we have a high uh, load of my hard plastic fragments as well as fibres and things like that. Whereas in the industrial area back up here is the only area that we find where the pellets are coming from, which makes sense because that's where the plastic's being made. So then we can come up with, okay, well, how are we going to stop it? Leading on to phase three. So in this stage, what we do is work with different uh, collaborators, uh, for example, Clean Water Group in, in Queensland, and we put in these drain buddies, which is basically a big trap in the, in the stormwater drain, so we can stop it before it even goes down the stormwater drain altogether. And then we can capture this material and we can actually start to identify what we're finding in there as well. And once we find out what kind of debris is coming from, then we can go to our stage four, which is all about the engagement and education. So we're working with local businesses and communities. And for example, this is a couple of photographs here of um, one of the schools in Sydney where the boys there that set St Paul's um, Catholic School there are using our program to be engaged and to look at different areas over time. We've also, as a part of this, because we're very much into education, we've designed whole um, um, curriculum-based programs for whole terms for much of the higher school um, uh, curriculum across Australia, which is really exciting. So where to from here? Well, we're about to come into our third year and it is all about engaging communities in citizen science. As I said, it's a global first program, uh, which is really great. And we're getting a lot of traction 
uh, start, we were starting in, in Asia before um, COVID hit, um, but our long-term goal is to establish OSMAP uh, as a globally recognised practical um, scientific program that can be used by citizens anywhere. Uh, so that's it from me. If you want to know any more, please drop me an email uh, or check us out on the website. Uh, and um, yeah, look forward to any questions. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you very much for that talk. I'm still, I really shouldn't have put my wallet in front of me tonight because I still can't get over the fact that over the last month I've eaten all my credit cards. So that's, <laughs> that's great to know. Yeah. Uh, but important research nonetheless. Thank you. Um, I've got a question from Stephanie. Are there any uh, do-it-yourself ways we can prevent fibres being released from our washing machines? The best way is to uh, wash all of those synthetic clothes in um, washing bags because uh, it can contain most of it in that washing bag. And then all those lint pieces that are caught up in the bottom of the washing bags, then you can remove those. There are other balls called Cora balls, which you can get um, at some supermarkets and online, which sort of gather a lot of those microfibers once you put them in through the wash. So the, other than that, using wearing organic and cotton is the best thing. <laughs>